Hi guys, uh, Chris McKenna here at Exam Debug. Uh, today we're going to continue sort of, well, probably the first time, uh, or our first real practical lesson on how to work with our text adventure. So last time, or the last video, I set you a challenge, which was to try and make a character class. Um, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're trying to work with object-oriented programming, um, specifically classes. So um, I'm going to make a character class for my text adventure game, and it's going to keep the information about both player characters and um, any other characters that we have to interact with, such as enemies inside of the game. So let's uh, go through it step by step, and let's see. So to create a class, we of course type class, um, followed by the name. Now, if you remember, we try and use it will work if you don't, but we try and use a capital letter at the beginning um, just because it's polite and it helps people realize and recognize what's a class and what isn't. And we have our brackets and of course our colon at the end. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a define, sorry, def define a method. And that method is going to be underscore underscore init, which means initialize underscore underscore and our initialization method is the one that runs when we make the instance of the class okay and this with a call so this is going to automatically run every time at the beginning when we create the class and when we use a method inside of a class we must always pass self and self is the reference to the instance of the class if any of that you're unsure about, please go back and watch the other object-oriented videos or the class videos. I don't want to dredge back too much too often or people will get kind of bored. Just little reminders. Okay, and then in here, inside of this uh, def and knit class, um, I'm going to create my attributes, which are going to be variables. Um, and variables inside of the class, we usually want to start with self to say that they are um, belong to that instance. They belong to that one version rather than belonging to all versions. Uh, and it helps us reference it in the other methods. So I'm going to say self. Um, let's see, what, what could I have for a character? Let's have a name. Um, and we'll set a default value here. I'm going to change this later, but let's just say none. Uh, let's say self, self hp for hit points. Uh, let's say default's going to be 100, self dot, let's say max, uh, I'll just say attack points. Okay, you could do like a min and a max. So this is going to be the amount that if they hit someone else, they, they hit for, um, let's say 20. Um, what else might we need? We've got name, hit points, attack points. Okay, I'll probably have to come back and add more in, but that's that's okay. I mean, um, we should plan this out beforehand, probably. Okay, and then we can make the other methods that we need for the character. So what, what common things might I need to ask the character? Well, I might need to, I mean, I could do things like get name and it will return the name, Things like this but we can as we've seen already we can access this by just calling the instance name followed by this so we don't need to do get and set methods but we might want to check things for example um, let's uh, say we're going to define a method called take underscore damage we'll just put dmg to be fast um, and what that's going to do is, if they're hit by someone else, they're going to lose that number of points. And we always have to pass self, but this time I want to bring in DMG. So DMG is going to be the amount that they've been hit for in this case. Um, and it's going to say self.hp equals self.hp minus dmg so that's going to be whatever is entered um, when the class is when the method is called it's going to be subtracted from this self dot hit point so we'll keep going down um, we don't need to return there 
Um, but we may want to have another method like is dead. So equal, oops, equals, sorry, I've gone crazy. Uh, self. And this is going to be a return method. Um, so let's say we have if self.hp is less than one. Mm, yep, return true. So it's true. They are dead. Else return false. So what that's going to do is it's going to say, are the hit points less than zero? So we'll assume that if it goes to less than zero, your character is dead. And if it's dead, then we say true. If it's false, then we say, if it's not true, then we say false. Um, what else might we have in here? Oh yeah, we want to do something to get the how much they hit for. So for example, I'm going to do get attack ATK. And of course we have self. And we don't need to know anything else. And in this case, we're going to start using random. Or I want to start using random. Because I don't want it to always be 20 points, that's a bit meh. I want to have a certain kind of randomness in my game. Um, so I'm going to say import random. And inside here, I'm going to say uh, atk equals random dot rand int. Now we did this before in one of the other ones, uh, the whole random thing. If you're not sure what's going on here, have a look. So, but all this is doing is saying, use the random um, can't remember it's called method in this case. I uh, use the uh, random package. Oh, I've forgotten the word. Okay, but use use random anyway. Um, and we want a number from zero. And the maximum we want it to be is our attack points. So self dot ap in this case. And then we want to return ATK. Um, now is there anything else we need? Yeah, there is. Um, but let's just check because I always say that you should check stuff as you go along. So let's just try creating our character first. So player, oops, player under, uh, no, we'll just call him PC, <laughs> player character equals character. And maybe we want to just, let's just check our attack to just see that that works. PC dot get attack. Okay, and hopefully we run it. Okay, four, and then if we run it this time, we should get a six. Okay, so we're getting different numbers there and they're all quite low, but I think it's just random. Yeah, okay, better. So we can see that we can get the random attack value back from this character each time. Um, and we could also check print uh, pc dot is dead. Now I should point out at this point, I'm just trying to do this quickly because the time is quite limited. Um, but for you guys, when you're making stuff, try and check it. Each time you make a new method, I would suggest you test it uh, right away afterwards to make sure it's it's going to be okay. But we're just um, I'm just trying to jump through things as fast as I can because we're we're kind of recovering stuff here. Um, the other thing I might want to have is I'm going to have a self dot um, items. So I'm going to give my character a list of items and we can put our lists whoops I don't know how I ended up down there we can put our lists inside here so we're just going to put an empty list um, but I could give it stuff like I could give it a uh, sword um, and I could give it a health potion so maybe all characters come with these as standard um, now if you wanted to do a more sort of detailed game, maybe you know more like a Skyrim or something, or a Torchlight, where you can change your weapons. 
we could have another weapon class and we could have this related here um, and then we could use that weapon class to generate the attack points um, and things like this but I'm trying to keep it reasonably simple rather than go down a big long rabbit hole and repeating the same things again and again um, but that should be enough for a basic one now of course we don't want our character to be named none um, but uh, we can change it as we've seen before we could do pc dot name equals to change the name but maybe when we're creating the character we want to give it a name to begin with okay so what we can actually do is we can put stuff in here when we're making it so i could give it a name like i don't know frank now we don't order enough put it in here what we do is we put it in here in the init and we would say name okay and that's a way just like we did with damage um, and the other things before that we can bring stuff into our class oh and i probably want to print the name print what am i doing print pc dot sorry it's getting really dark here there's a massive storm just happened outside uh, oh well um okay so oh no it's not a method sorry pc dot name okay so what is going to happen here is when we create the character we say add in this and it's going to be here but this creates a problem for us because what happens if we don't have anything here what happens if we want to change it later um, so what is going to happen is if we don't put that in we're going to get an error but what we can do actually instead is we can make it optional and we've not done this before but just to give you some idea that there's there's a lot more stuff we can learn here is we can put in a default up here so we can say in the in these brackets we're bringing in the information excuse me we can say name equals none now this time if we run it it's going to say the name is none and that's because this is going to be a default but the thing is if we then choose to say call our character frank and we run it try again okay and we run it it's going to override this here so this is a good way to set up defaults and we could do the same with our hit points for example we could set a default hit points uh, we could set a default attack points and that way if someone wanted to they could override these in order to um, in order to do what they liked basically um, so it gives us more functionality is if, if you put your defaults up here oh sorry I would have to change these down here as well otherwise that wouldn't make sense um, yeah you'd have uh, so these are defaults but they can be overridden down here by putting in what we like um, is there anything else we need uh, last thing I want to do is I want to check if they have an item so I'm going to create a new class called has item and it's going to be self comma item okay and item is going to be brought from outside and we're going to say if item in self dot items then we want to return oops return true else return false and so this way we can check whether or not the player has a certain item now that's going to be our basic for now um, we're going to add in more later but for um, as we go along we'll add in more and more um, but for now what I'd like you to do is for the next one I want you to think about how we could make a user interface that's going to tell our story there's lots of ways you can do it um, and there's no right or wrong way 
But see if you can think, how could we have a user interface that's going to create our characters, going to create a room, and it's going to tell our story?